Usually, the hosts on The View say the stupidest things imaginable, but yet they have a lot of influence when it comes to political discourse because this is a very popular television show. Uh, you know, last Thanksgiving, I think maybe that was 2018, I'm not sure, but they were uh, lying to people about Medicare for All, saying that it's a bad policy. So, you know, when, when I saw them put out the segment where they ask whether or not Joe Biden owes progressives any concessions after they just helped him get elected, I kind of braced myself for a disaster of a segment expecting them to shit on progressives and the left. But to my surprise, this segment wasn't actually the disaster that I was expecting. They kind of shockingly came to really rational and sound conclusions about this election. Take a look. Now that Joe Biden is our president-elect, some progressive activists and politicians who supported him want to make sure he includes people in his administration who represent their interests. So what does this mean? Should we trust him to put folks in and see what he does, or should we just give him a list of stuff we want done and, and go from there? Sarah, I'll start with you. What do you think? Well, Biden's at the top of the ticket, so it is up to him. That's what he was voted to do. And I think a lot of people who voted for him wouldn't have necessarily voted for a Bernie Sanders. So it was his more moderate views that I think secured a lot of that victory. Now, I, uh, the, progress, the progressives make up a huge part of the Democratic Party. So I definitely think they have a place at the table. They just shouldn't be hosting the whole dinner party. Um, I like the idea of them pulling some of his ideas. I think there's a place for them to contribute. One of them is working wages. We saw in Florida that the state went Republican, but on that same ballot, they voted through a $15 minimum wage by 2026, I think it was. So it shows that uh, the, the party of the working class needs to speak to those working class people that are sometimes voting uh, Republican. I also think student loan mm -hmm. forgiveness is an area where we can all get on the same page. But I think there's always a place for people. Uh, Biden and Harris are showing right now that they're appointing people with diversity. And I think that there's a space for ideological diversity as well. They spoke a little bit about even having maybe Republicans in the cabinet. So I think we're going to see mm -hmm. a pretty vast array of people and ideas coming forth to lead the right. Biden administration. Well, the progressives have very good ideas, and the American people agree with the progressive ideas. They want health care uh, to be affordable and readily available. They want somebody to take care of the fact that the climate is changing and to uh, have respect for science. Um, uh, they want a allocation of funds, I would think, if, if presented correctly, and not that you defund the police, but that you reallocate funds so that you have social workers and other important people dealing with uh, with with problems like that. And, um, and by the way, I just think that Jill Biden should be the secretary of education. She has a PhD in education and she's going back to the classroom. But I think she would be much more effective to take over for Betsy DeVos, who basically should be a bit an eraser monitor at this point. Just be an eraser monitor. That's that's the qualifications you have, darling. Um, I would like to see right. Pete Buttigieg be the ambassador to the United Nations or give him any job, really. The man is so competent and so capable, I think he could run the country if, if he had the chance. So um, there are wonderful people in the Democratic Party, and I'm so happy that they're going to be in there pretty soon so that we can all relax. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I, I certainly think that it should reflect not only the composition of, of our country in, in terms of diversity, but it also has to reflect um, the voters' values. And, and I agree with, with Joy in that, you know, if you look at the, this election, progressive incumbents in swing districts overwhelmingly won re-election. Every incumbent that supported Medicare for All and co-sponsored Medicare for All in a swing district kept their seat. And also these progressive I people, you know, that are calling them progressive ideas or socialist ideas, those ideas won convincing victories across the country, including in purple and red states. Voters in Florida, as Sarah mentioned, passed a $15 an hour minimum wage. Four states legalized marijuana. Uh, there was a poll that a majority of Americans um, support progressive policies, which are higher minimum wage, free college, paid maternity leave, government funding for childcare, tuition-free 
uh, college. And, and so really, I think that this administration needs to reflect those views because America has spoken. Those are the views that uh, right. America supports, not this sort of conservative right wing uh, uh, agenda. That's just not true. Right. That was shockingly, shockingly reasonable. It wasn't perfect, but it was reasonable. And that's the best that you can hope for, honestly, when it comes to The View. Uh, and Sonny Hostin's point, I would argue that her saying that was really important because what they say, their words hold weight in D.C. Politicians go on this show and watch this program. So we need them to say things that are common sense because you don't hear this on mainstream media. Sony said, uh, progressive incumbents in swing districts overwhelmingly won re-election. Every incumbent that supported Medicare for All and co-sponsored Medicare for All in a, swing in a swing district kept their seat. For her to say that is shocking. I mean, we know that this is the case, factually speaking, but I expected them to find some way to rationalize this, that, oh, well, it was some other factor. It wasn't Medicare for All. It couldn't possibly be Medicare for All. But she, she came to the right conclusion. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but good job, hosts on The View. That felt dirty to say that. Uh, now, Sarah Haynes, uh, she suggested that people who voted for Joe Biden, they uh, must support more moderate views since they voted for the more moderate candidate. But the problem with that is that's not necessarily the case because everyone in mainstream media, including you, pushed this electability narrative. You have to vote for Joe Biden, even if you may not like him, because he's the most electable. Even his wife, Jill Biden, said, look, I know that you may not be in love with my husband's policies, but if you want to be Trump, you've got to go with Joe Biden. Now, I don't agree with that. I think that uh, Joe Biden probably would have lost this election had it not been for Trump's bungling of COVID-19. And I think that Bernie Sanders would have won by a larger margin than Joe Biden. And when you look at exit polls from the Democratic Party's primaries, you see that people, even if they voted for Joe Biden, supported Medicare for all overwhelmingly. So the base wants Medicare for all. Most Americans want Medicare for all. So because they vote for a moderate candidate, even if it doesn't necessarily make sense, that doesn't mean that they support moderate policy views because people want progressive policies. And they made this point. Uh, jo Joy Behar said that progressives have good ideas and not only that, Americans agreed with said good ideas. Uh, she says Americans want affordable health care. She was super close. We want health care. You can take out that affordable qualifier because we just want health care, period. But nonetheless, I mean, the point she was making, uh, you know, I see what she was trying to, to do. She even said we should defund the police. Now, she didn't say that. She said, well, maybe we can reallocate resources away to pol from police departments into social health programs. I mean, that's functionally still defund the police, but you can call it whatever the fuck you want so long as we reach the conclusion of defunding the police. I can't believe she said that. Uh, also, she uh, she did advocate for Dr. Jill Biden to be uh, education secretary and Pete Buttigieg to be in Biden's administration. Hard disagree there. I don't think that someone related to Joe Biden should be in government because then all of the criticisms that you know the left and Democrats lobbed against Trump for putting his family in positions of power would be moot and you'd be viewed as hypocrites. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, most of what she said there was uh, pretty reasonable. So the reason why I'm playing you this clip is because one, I think it's important that we give credit where credit is due. I don't want to be the guy who always posts YouTube videos shitting on everyone who I don't like at all moments of time. Like I want to show you that we, we, are allowing people to grow, right? We're objective. And if they say something that is reasonable and correct, then I want to I wanna highlight it. But what I also want to do is I want to hold them accountable. So in the event, two, four years from now, Democrats fail to deliver after they know, they're cognizant of the fact that progressive policy ideas aren't just winning ideas, but they're very popular, what's going to be their response? Will they actually hold Democrats accountable? Because when AOC was elected, they were shitting on AOC, saying you can't criticize leadership, you can't criticize Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein. So are they actually going to grow from this new information that they have? Will they, you know, criticize Democrats for not proposing leftist policy ideas rather than just criticizing the left for speaking out and advocating for said ideas? That's yet to be determined. I will say that if I had to make a guess, I'd say that they're going to uh, get back into their old habits and be propagandists, 
effectively for the Democratic Party. But look, at least when it comes to this segment, credit where it's due, everything that they said, or I shouldn't say everything, most of what they said was, was pretty spot on and accurate and really important for them to say, given how large their platform is. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.